Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your August 16th to the 31st, 2021 reading for you. But this is going to be a little bit different because this is going to be on how to increase our intuitive power. So our intuitive abilities. So if you are interested, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and keep on watching to see what Spirit has to say. If you are interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. <clears throat> Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. <coughs> Excuse me. Please bear with my voice. I am getting over the flu. Let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Sagittarius, August 16th to the 31st, 2021 Sagittarius, how to increase your intuitive abilities. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. At the bottom, we have the lovers, which is Gemini energy. And we have judgment, which is, well, it is judgment. So if we have Gemini energy within our natal chart, that's going to be coming out very profoundly to ground us during this time. We have here a hermit in our inner self, Virgo energy. So if we have that within our natal chart, that's going to be coming out quite profoundly in our inner selves. We have the nine of pentacles and the nine of wands. We have all nines here that from the hermit to the nine of wands, this is showing us that we're coming very close to the completion of a cycle. We might be very impatient because we're so close to that completion of a cycle that, you know, revelation coming forward that we we almost give up. Like we almost throw the baby out with the bathwater. So do be mindful of that. We then have the King of Cups, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. If we have this within our chart, it's coming through within our hearts, which is a very comfortable place for water sign energy to be. Our hearts are going to be a bit of a warrior during this time. Then we have Capricorn energy. If we're born on the cusp, there we go, with the devil. If we're born on the cusp with Capricorn or we have this within our chart, that's going to be coming out quite profoundly within our heart. But we're also going to see ourselves really pulled in one direction that is a little bit toxic for us. So do be mindful of that. And then we have the Scorpio card, which is... Uh, the death card, which is Scorpio energy. If we're born on the cusp with Scorpio, or we have this within our chart, that's coming up very profoundly. We're going to see kind of a dying away of what's been holding us back, kind of like the puppeteer strings. The four of cups in the public arena, a gift is coming that we're really not, 
we're not prepared for. It's going to be something that divinity hands our way and we don't see it as the gift that it is because we have the three of swords here. We're really looking at heartbreak and pain and disappointment, but there's something here from our past, from people who have passed on or from a past life experience that really starts to inspire us, really starts to move us forward and has us turn our heartbreak into our own kind of, you know, triumph to take those weapons that have hurt us and make them into into guidelines for the way that we're moving forward and the, the wisdom that is coming into our lives. Now let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of during this time. Sagittarius, August 16th to the 31st, 2021 Sagittarius, intuitive energy that we have to be mindful of. Now these were all shuffled and meditated on beforehand and it's really interesting because it's the lovers and the hermit. So the two energies that come up in our inner self, in our public, in our rooted self, come up here as energies that we also have to be mindful of. We have to be mindful of falling into the trap of confusing lust with love. What do we lust for and what do we love within our life? You know, what are we lusting after? You know, what is it that we think, if I achieve this, I will finally view myself as successful. I will finally earn the, you know, appreciation of others. And what is it that we actually love doing that really makes our hearts sing, that makes us move forward? And then we have the Virgo energy. We're going to have a very hard time, <coughs> excuse me, during this time, getting out of our own heads, meaning that this Virgo energy is going to be very empowering in our inner self. We're going to see it as being able to move us forward, but we're also going to be drawn to kind of the people who are more mysterious or getting too much in our own heads thinking, okay, I, I have to be able to figure it out. If I can't figure it out by myself without any guidance, without any greater understanding, then I really haven't done the work. I really haven't gotten to the place that I need to be. And that's going to be something that we need to be mindful of. We need to be mindful of falling into that trap because during this time, we need to connect with others. We need to kind of bounce ideas. Even if we write something down, it's like, okay, well, I'm thinking it like it's like this. And I think of it, you know, today, but when I come back and read it next Monday, you know, is it going to mean the same thing for me? Is it going to be the same inspiration? So during this time, that's going to be really, really important for us to be able to see, to be able to understand, to be able to be empowered with. And then it moves us to the chakra energy that we have to be mindful of, but it also moves us to this place where we have to look at what we love within life and not look at trying to make other people love us or doing everything else so that people see us as, you know, right, see us as not right, but like right for them, see us as people that they want to be associated with or they want to have in their corner or, or something like that. It's like we're trying to be to earn other people's appreciation when what we should do is stand in our own power and our own light during this time. <coughs> I'm just going to take a sip of water. So give me just one moment. Okay. Let's look at our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading. And these two, we have Soul's Healing, which is the Soul Star Chakra, located six inches above our crown. And we have the Root Chakra with Nourishing, not the Root Chakra, the Earth Star Chakra, which is located six inches below our feet. This is going to be a time with nurturing that we have to nurture our roots and nurture the inner child within us, nurture what we love and what we want and what we're building and what we desire. And it moves us to the Soul's Healing. If we can nurture our roots, we let down this healing energy that we let down the fact that our, our angels and our spirit guides are right there with us that divinity is closer than we imagine it to be and we let ourselves embrace inspiration it moves us to this place of love and the thing with the lovers that's coming through that we have to be mindful of and the thing with gemini energy and gemini is our sister energy so this is going to be a time where that sister energy is going to be coming out quite profoundly we have to make sure that we don't sacrifice ourselves to have other people like us, to have other people love us, to have other people see us in the way that they deem respectable or right. This is a time where we need to follow our hearts. We need to say, this is what I love. This is what inspires me. This is what moves me forward. This is what, you know, graces me and brings me joy and gives me inspiration. And it moves us then 
to judgment, which is, is my heart lighter than a feather? That's what Anubis is doing. That's what Anubis did in ancient Egyptian times. He judged the living, he judged the dead as, as they passed into paradise or if they passed into paradise. And what he would do is weigh their heart against a feather. And this is a time where our hearts are being weighed against that feather. What is keeping our hearts held back, brought down? What is keeping us from moving forward the way that we want to enjoy in, in beauty, in greater understanding? And it moves us to the nine of wands. It moves us to the inner self of how is it that everybody else's ideas and wants and needs are usurping my own? When I'm connecting with spirit, it can be overwhelming. When we connect, it is a time where we're absolutely plugged in. Now we can have a ritual to do, a prayer or a poem or a, a something that we say that starts to open up the doors because we don't want those doors opened all the time. Because if we have these doors open all the time, it's just going to be draining. We can feel our body feeling sluggish. We can get headaches. We can feel just completely overwhelmed. So that's going to be something we need to be mindful of. With the nine of wands, we need to balance ourselves. We need to look and say, look at the war that I've been through, the war of existence, the war of embracing my own personal power, my own personal understanding. Look at my roots where I am rising. Judgment is also rising out of darkness, doubt, despair, hurt, pain, really looking at our emotional selves, being that warrior and saying, what is it that my heart needs and desires? How is it that I move me forward? And then we start to look at the moments. This isn't going to be a time where it's about the big things. We are working towards the big things, but it's about the little things. It's about the small, gentle connections. It's about the beautiful laughter of moments. It's about joy and connection, success and the heart. This is going to be a time where we need to open that up and say, I need to celebrate this right now. This is the time where, you know, right before all the wheat needs to be brought in, right before everything can kind of go wrong. This is a time where you see that the harvest is good and you know that if you can do the rest of the job, everything's going to be okay. Now, if you know anything about agriculture at all, there was still a, a time of, you know, things can go wrong, right? But if we take this moment and we say, I am reveling in this, this alignment, this beauty, this success, this prosperity, the, the hawk here is hooded. So that means that we're not looking at the big picture. Hawks have amazing eyesight for far away. Their eyesight up close, like they're nearsighted. They can't see up close. I think that's nearsighted. They can see far away. That might be farsighted. I don't know. But this is going to be a time where we need to see up close. We need to see the right here, the right now, and not be looking so far into the future and being able to celebrate what it is that we desire. It brings us, <coughs> excuse me, to the hermit. And the hermit is turning inward. The hermit is not looking at, you know, having to have the best, meaning the hermit wears the old comfortable clothes that they have or where's the comfortable things. This is a time to be comfortable with turning inward. This isn't a time to close everything off and kind of go into mad scientist mode and say, I have to figure everything out. It's, it's kind of like trying to write or trying to draw or trying to do something. And there's an old saying to say, to be a good writer, you have to be a great reader, meaning you have to read a lot. You have to devour a lot of books. And that's just to be good. That's not to be great. It's just to be good. But if you shut yourself off from inspiration and different ideas and words and the flow, then you're shutting yourself off from being truly good at something. And that's what I'm seeing here. That's the quote that keeps on coming up when I keep on looking at the hermit. To be great at something, to be great at the connection with spirit, we have to look at people connecting with spirit or embrace guidance. It could be reading a book. It could be keeping a journal. It could be, you know, listening to things on YouTube. It could be a myriad of things, you know, just even having a conversation out loud or in your head with spirit and seeing what they answer. It could be throwing the cards. If you're into tarot cards, you know, every day and just throwing them at the beginning of your day saying, what is this day going to bring and bringing one card out or seeing what cards just fall out and seeing what that means, seeing how that progresses, seeing what that brings forward for us. This is a time where we need to connect and we need to connect not by saying when I'm perfect at it, when everything is great, when the muses have absolutely inspired me, that's going to be the time I open up the door. No, this is going to be the time that I open up the door when I start to see me, 
when I start to connect with me, when I start to embrace who I am and what I desire. And that makes us a warrior of our hearts as we are connecting, as we are looking, as we are gaining an understanding. The Knight of Cups is, is saying here, I am a warrior of my heart. I am submerging a, you know, absolutely surrounding myself with everything that my heart needs, everything that I desire. And I'm looking at how to better myself, how to go after what I want, how to embrace what I desire, how to open up the door and how to be, how to be the very best, most powerful, most determined me. It brings us then as we are this warrior, as we are this determined individual, it brings us to the devil, which is saying, what are our strings? What are the strings that are being pulled? by others, by ourselves. What is it that we are addicted to? Whether it be addictions that are, you know, commonly understood, like the addiction to drugs or alcohol, but it can also be the addiction to being a people pleaser, the addiction to fear, the addiction to chaos. What is it that is corrupting and negating our lives? The addiction to taking everything personally, instead of saying, you know what, that's somebody's opinion. It doesn't have to have that effect over me. And one of the things when we connect with spirit and as being people who want to connect with our intuitive abilities, we're going to be a lot more sensitive. We're going to be picking up on a lot more things that can be toxic at times. So we have to be mindful of this. This is why we also have to have a prayer or a poem or a ritual that closes our connection with spirit that says, okay, you know what? I don't want to know everything right now. I don't want to have everything flooding in at me. I need to be centered within me. The time is over. You know, we've, we've talked. I understand things. Fantastic. Let me move forward. And that's going to be really, really important for our own hearts, but also in a way of being that warrior for our hearts, being that person who protects what I love and what I desire from life. And as we do this, it moves us to the death card, the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new. The heart is reborn. And as the heart is reborn, we are stronger than we ever, ever were. We are more knowledgeable than we ever could be. We are understanding ourselves more and more and more. But we aren't the same person we were when we began this journey. We just, we just aren't. The death card is an ending. And when we have this ending, we can mourn who we once were, or we can mourn the person we had become when we lost our true goal along the way, when the world kind of corrupted us, when the devil kind of pulled us in, the chaotic energy of existence or the lower energy vibration, the base energy vibration that is so easy to be pulled in by this, this world. And we start to see ourselves openly and honestly. We start to see the transformation and we can start to see, okay, that was a pivotal moment in my life or wow, you know, I lived under so much stress that yes, I had stronger reactions to things because I was always revved up to an eight, a nine, a 10 in my stress level. And so of course I was going to react to this more strongly, more firmly than others would. And that brings us then to the public arena. Gifts are going to be coming our way that we're not going to expect. This is really going to be for a lot of us here at Sagittarius from those who have passed. It can be from a grandparent, a great grandparent, you know, whomever it is, a person who has passed, a loved one who is letting us know, I'm watching over you. I'm handing you a gift. And at that time, we're going to think, oh my gosh, you know, Uncle Sal would absolutely, you know, have roared laughter at this. It's not what I want right now. It's not what I need, but it is important for me to see. So this is going to be something that becomes, becomes a, it's like, it, like it pulls us into the past and propels us into the future at the exact same time. So do be mindful of that. And it really has us looking at the heartbreak, the pain, the disappointment, the anger, the upset that we have been through, not as victims, but as victors, as people who are taking this hurt and this pain and are going to use it to wisdom, going to use it to better connect with the emotional understanding of the world around them. Those who haven't suffered will never truly be able to connect. And I don't mean that we have to suffer in a horrific way. It's just understanding that life is grief and everything about life has its troubles and its tribulations. It's kind of like when you're, you're little and you hurt yourself and you, you watch, like if you watch a toddler get hurt and it's, oh my gosh, it's just absolutely devastating. They're, they're, they're so upset because it's the biggest thing that has ever happened to them. And we have to honor that pain. Even if we think, oh, well, it's kind of like the same thing as, you know, getting your finger stuck in, 
in a fold-out bench or something like that. It's not, it's not that big a deal. We won't really remember it, but it shapes us. And that pain, we have to understand, becomes what connects us with the rest of humanity. It's not always being perfect that connects us with our fellow human. It's, it's the heartbreaks, it's the pains, it's the disappointments, it's the angers, it's the upset. It's everything in between that connects us and that is empowering for us. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that is the Knight of Swords. It's being very mindful of going off with half the information, being very mindful of wanting a change and just saying, you know what, forget it. I'm just charging forward. I'm just moving forward. I'm just going after what I want right now. We have to look at the bigger picture. We have to do our research, which is what Sagittarius is really great at and that connecting with the people around us and our ideas. It moves us then to the subconscious chakra energy, which is communication. We have to say, this is the throat chakra. We have to say what we want. We have to communicate that with ourselves, with our spirit guides. We have to be open and honest. We have to say, you know what? This is what I want. This is what I need. And it might be difficult. It might be something I, I didn't think I would say, or I didn't know that I needed for myself. But if I start communicating this way, I can start to get what I want. I can start to see what I want and how I want this ability to to grow and to empower me and to move me forward. And also understanding that as we communicate what we want, as we embrace the power of the throat chakra, we're going to see ourselves being able to com communicate and being able to take in situations on higher levels and being, a, ooh, excuse me, being able to see what others overlook. It moves us to our subconscious rooted self, which is the magician. Magic is here power is here. Embrace it. Stand before the altar of your existence and say, as above, so below. As I think it, so it becomes. What I think is going to shape my world. And I'm using it as this kind of magical, this powerful force to be able to guide me forward. It brings us then to our subconscious inner self, which is the three of, of wands, new horizons, new abilities, new new gateways start to open up and it's something more than we anticipated. It's something more than we realized. It brings us then to our subconscious emotional self, which is the page of cups. As much as we are a defender of what we love, we are also a student of what we love and what we desire and where it is that we want to be opening ourselves to our hearts and saying, I have to learn. Let me learn. Let me see. Let me understand asking those deeper questions. That's going to be everything for us during this time. And it brings us then to our subconscious public self, which is the nine of cups. Wishes are granted. Seeing a bit into the future, seeing the, the greater understanding of ourselves comes forward. And that's because in the crystal ball, there is actually an older woman where the younger woman looks in. And that's what we're going to be able to see, the wisdom guiding us and ourselves transforming into this ageless wisdom. And it's going to be a bit of a wish granted. It's going to be a bit of beauty coming forward that others will be able to see in us before we ourselves are able to see it. All right, Sagittarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the beauty of the moments, not looking for the next best thing. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius.